I decided to move on and start landscaping a new area on the layout. Can you guess which one? Hi everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to Donington Castle Model Railway. Now in the past I've talked about the process I use for landscaping, um, but there was an area of the layout now uh, that's quite self-contained um, that we're able to work on now that this top board uh, over behind me is, is in place and we're working on the upper lines. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to take you through that entire process and show you how I go about that. So let's get straight over to the layout and get stuck in. This is the area that we're going to be tackling in this video. So as you can see, um, at the bottom we have the heritage line which emerges from uh, uh, the tunnel on the right hand side. Um, and then on the kind of the top is our Western lines, our Western region lines. So the idea is going to be to um, fill in this gap here in the scenics. So I will talk you through what the plan is first of all. So we're starting here from some uh, baseboard uh, that's been put in place. Um, because I have open frame baseboards, um, I've had, uh, well, I, I guess I, I chose to put this at the height of the heritage line. Now, I'm going to let you see what that looks like underneath. Um, I'm not going to win any awards for joinery, um, but from my perspective, that doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not sure how much you can make out there, but as you can see, there are kind of blocks sticking up from the main frame, and then the baseboard is laid on the top of it. Um, I think the message here is you don't need to be an expert joiner to do this stuff. Um, because all of the landscape over the top of it is going to hide all of that stuff. So just to show you, um, if I push down on that, that's pretty solid. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't want to stand on it, um, but it's not going to move, uh, which is all we really need. So let me just zoom back out again. So our plan for here is going to be, um, our line is going to emerge uh, from the tunnel here. Um, and that kind of tunnel scenic break gives us an opportunity just to kind of tell the story that the line has moved from uh, the area it was round at the front of the layout round into a different area. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of a different look to this. Uh, there are going to be retaining walls, but they're going to look different to the ones around the other side of the layout. Um, I'm going to base these more on uh, the brickwork and the brick colour around the Basingstoke area. Um, I know one of you, and I apologies for not remembering your name, uh, left a comment um, about that. So I'm definitely going to take that on board in this area. Um, so uh, I'll come back to that retaining wall in a second. Um, now, the angle, I don't know if it comes through on the camera very well, but the angle here of these two lines looks actually quite steep, and that's because the heritage line is going up a gradient from right to left, and the top line is going down a gradient, which makes them um, look steeper than they actually are. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, they are reasonable gradients here, but... Um, they are less than they look because they're effectively um, double the gradient, as it were, because you've got one going in one, one direction, one going in the other. So this area does slope very gradually up here, um, and the top level slopes downwards. Um, so we're going to need to handle that in the landscaping. But the other thing to be mindful of is that round this end, uh, we're, we're really in the countryside. But then as we sweep round, we're starting then to get towards the station area. So we're going to need to have a little bit of a, a change in the look and the feel of the landscape. Now, the layout's not big enough to have uh, countryside to suburbs to inner city to station. Um, but we are going to try and um, make some kind of transition between um, kind of open fields and countryside um, and the more built up areas towards this end here. So the plan is as follows. Uh, coming out of the tunnel, we're going to have uh, a, a small section of retaining wall. And that is going to then lead onto um, some quite steep embankment. Now, as this area sweeps round, uh, that embankment is going to become more of a split level. And we're going to have a flat area in here. So from this end here, um, this is... This, if you imagine, is where the station platform's going to be for the main station. Then outside of it is probably going to be a road of some kind serving that station. Therefore, it makes sense to have this follow on um, into uh, maybe a kind of a either a kind of a, a bit of scrapland or a car park, but basically a kind of a, a kind of a tarmacy kind of stone covered surface 
uh, would fit quite well. And kind of then as that sweeps around here, um, that that area would kind of then start to, to taper out, be a bit more overgrown down the bottom end. And then eventually that would then turn into kind of more scrubland um, on those embankments as we head round and down to that retaining wall. Uh, we'd want some kind um, of uh, barrier or gateway between the line and that area. So I'm thinking about um, some kind of uh, native hedgerow um, along the bottom here. Um, and then probably up the top here, um, maybe more of a wire fence or, or more of a security-like fence, um, but something you would have seen in the, in the 1970s. Um, so that'll hopefully give us two different looks to the to the boundaries around that um, car park or kind of waste ground. Um, and in this video, um, I'm hoping to be able to take you through the process of getting uh, the landform in place and the landscaping, um, get some uh, grass and the kind of concrete surface or the asphalt tarmac down, um, and then hopefully some of the kind of detailing or the, or the kind of the start of the detailing um, and that should uh, be a pretty decent video's worth, so we'll probably stop around there. Now, as you can see, the baseboard is in place. Uh, so the first jobs are to get that retaining wall section um, complete down there. Now, I'm going to use exactly the same technique as I used for um, the other part of the layout. So you will find uh, a link to that video up in the top right-hand corner. I'm going to change the pattern of the retaining wall slightly, but the process I'm going to follow to, 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 to build it, to cut it, and to paint it is going to be exactly the same. Um, so I will get that bit done next. We can then start to think about how we're going to then use insulation foam to form the base of this. And as I say, um, aim for a it starting out flat, and then we'll end up with um, a slight embankment over this side, and then another embankment down this side um, as that land stays flat. Um, and then the railways kind of taper away from it. But that'll make a little bit more sense uh, when I get to that point. Uh, so I will come back when I have got the section of retaining wall um, in a state where we can then start to uh, think about landscaping. And this is what our retaining wall is going to look like. Uh, it's not in its final position there at the moment. It's just kind of leaning against uh, the upper lines. Uh, so that will be fitted a little bit closer into place. But hopefully it gives you an idea about how that's going to come together um, and enables them to kind of work um, some kind of embankments um, and the kind of overall landform um, just around that. Um, I'll put more decoration uh, probably on that. So we'll have some capping stones um, and maybe a few little abutments and things just to um, add a little bit more interest to that. Um, but what that means is that we've got a rough template in place. We can then start to get some um, insulation foam into this area. So I will come back when I start doing that. So here we have a, a nice thick slab of insulation foam. Um, I cut it with this. It's uh, a an old wood saw uh, that will not cut wood anymore, uh, really rusty and blunt, uh, but it will actually cut through this stuff remarkably well. So actually that's a really good kind of second life to that particular tool. Now I want the top surface uh, of that kind of asphalty kind of car parky area to be relatively flat. So I'm going to use uh, the actual top surface um, of the insulation foam for that. Um, I've peeled off the silver foil. Oh, there's a little bit remaining there. I'm going to go over the top of that with plaster bandage in the next stage anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of cut um, that piece out um, and then kind of drop that into, into place. Um, I'll then kind of work around it uh, with other bits of foam. Um, they're all off cuts, um, so it'll be a little bit, again, like Tetris. Um, but I will uh, get that saw on that block uh, and get back to you in a second. And that is our first piece roughly fit in place. I'm just going to go through that same process now uh, to get the rest of that area filled. Um, then I'll come back um, and show you uh, before I add the kind of the embankments uh, onto that. So be back shortly. And there we have it. Now that might look like an absolute mess. Um, and to be fair, it is, uh, but that's really not um, a problem at the moment because um, we can always do a little bit more sculpting when all that's stuck down. Um, and then remember, we're going to go over the top with plaster bandage and some homemade sculptor mold. So there was plenty of opportunity um, to get that in the state that we want. For me, the most important thing is the uh, bit to the left hand side at the front um, is flat because that's kind of where our car parky kind of space is going to be. Uh, so the rest of it, 
we can fix as we go along. Um, one thing I will just say about when you're working with this kind of insulation foam is please do wear a dust mask because the bits that come off this are really not good for you. Um, so please don't be breathing those in. Right, okay. Next job is to get that stuck down. So I'm going to use um, a really cheap solvent-free grab adhesive. So I'm just going to whack that on the bottom and get all those stuck down um, and then put some weights on the top. So I'll come back when that's done um, because then that's going to be, uh, we're going to need to leave that to dry for a bit. And that is it all stuck down with this stuff, just basically the cheapest uh, solvent-free grab adhesive in the shop. Um, so I'm going to now put some weights on top of this to make sure that uh, dries in place. Uh, so don't worry that it's a mess. Uh, that will all get covered up in the next stage. So I will see you when that's dry and we're ready to start adding some plaster bandage. And there we have our insulation foam all stuck down. Uh, you may be at a spot that I've taken a few of the sharp edges off uh, with a scalpel um, just to make the, the ground flow a little bit better. Um, it is quite messy. Uh, that doesn't really matter to me. We're going to go over the top of it with plaster bandage. Um, so as long as there aren't any kind of massive great voids in there, um, it should be absolutely fine. Um, now there are millions of videos of applying plaster bandage, so I'm not going to um, subject you to that. Uh, I am using this wonderful Hobbycraft um, plaster bandage. Um, it's gone up in price um, because I just went and picked some more up. It's now a whole two pounds per roll. Um, I, I, I please do tell me if I'm missing something, but I have uh, I, I'm not sure what those um, significantly more expensive brands um, of this offer. This stuff is absolutely um, fine for me. I've built the rest of the layout using it. Um, you can see that I've cut it into some rectangles there, and I've got um, a tub uh, from a takeaway uh, filled with water. And as you'd have seen in all those other videos, I'm just going to drop uh, that plaster in the water and then transfer it over onto that um, insulation foam um, and give it uh, a co one covering. Um, if there's any areas that look a little bit weak, I might go over that with two. Um, I hear people talking about going over with two or three layers, but I've never seen any need to, 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 um, to do that. Um, I, I've always kind of got, got, a, got away with one and two um, maximum. So I'm going to get on with that now um, and I will return when that has been done. And there we have it. Uh, that is the entire roll of that bandage used up. Um, that's got us one layer coverage across all of that. A little bit just to finish off down that bottom end. Um, but I will get the retaining wall and just work out where that's going to go before I um, cover too much up down there. But I'm just going to let that um, go off. Um, it's getting quite solid already, um, but I'm going to leave that for a bit before um, I come back. Uh, next job um, is going to be um, homemade sculptor mold. Um, so we're going to use that just to smooth off the landscape a little bit, um, not make it overly smooth. Um, also look at just making sure we've got a nice flat surface, well, flattish surface um, for the area, uh, for that large area that's going to be the um, kind of abandoned car park or, or waste ground or whatever that turns out to be. So I will leave that to dry uh, and you will be back in a second. I will be back uh, when it's all dry. Right, I will very quickly show you how I mix up um, a new batch of homemade sculptor mold. Mm -hmm. So I have a big tub full of this, which is effectively mushed up toilet tissue. Um, I just keep it wet. I don't recommend you do that. I do recommend you dry it out first off uh, so you don't get anything nasty growing in that. This is actually kept in quite a controlled environment. So uh, that's been like, that's been damp for about six months. Um, and luckily nothing's nasty growing in there. And then all I'll do is grab just Cheap plaster of Paris, chuck a bit on the top. Add a little bit of water because this isn't um, that damp at the moment. And then I'll just give that a good old mix up to really coat the um, everything in that plaster. You don't need to see me mixing. Uh, and then when that's all mixed up, I'll go and take that over to the layout and apply that um, in a thin layer. Um, like with sculptor mold, uh, you can leave it a little bit. Um, 
for it to start to set and then just with kind of like a damp finger you can then work over it just to kind of smooth any any kind of lumps and bumps out um but uh the properties of this kind of homemade stuff will depend on your ratio of uh, plaster and the type of plaster you use um to the amount of water and the amount of kind of toilet tissue that's in here I'd say just really kind of have a play with it and, and, and kind of get used to the properties yourself of your own uh, mixes if you want to go down that route. Um, and so just, just kind of have fun with some uh, messy modeling. And here we are with the sculptor mold done. Um, this has been drying for about three days now um, and it's still very wet. Uh, the garage is probably about 35% humidity. Um, so even with that kind of being quite low, the water's just not evaporating out of this because it's so cold. So this might take a week or so before we can get this painted. Um, you'll also notice that the sculptor mold stops down there in this corner. That's because I need to get the uh, retaining wall in place and then get that embedded in. So uh, next job's going to be to get that ready to go. Uh, so let's head over to the bench and, and get stuck into that. I will pop up uh, a screenshot from Lightburn um, of all of these pieces. Um, you will have seen them previously. Um, so we're gonna have a retaining wall with a kind of a wing wall like that. Hopefully that's coming across okay, if I put that in the light. Um, then we've got a little back piece for this side, uh, just so we can see some bricks um, from the other, from the running lines at the top. I'm going to pop an edging strip down here just to make that uh, look a bit more interesting where that meets up uh, with the tunnel portal. Then I'm going to bend this because it's only uh, this is cut onto card. Um, so I'll kind of bend that. Um, I mean, it's not super realistic because you're not going to have bent bricks like this, but um, that'll hopefully just cover up that gap um, in there. I'm doing a very really good job of showing that to the camera. Um, kind of like that just and then on the end uh, this kind of section here which my hands in the way of now and then on the top here we'll then put um, well these pieces uh, again these are laser cut uh, from two mil wood so we've just got a little capping section on there and then these will run up um, and along there so that's Uh, this is, um, as you might have spotted on Lightburn, there is just a single piece for this, but cut four times um, because there are an even number of bricks. Um, you're able to kind of flip these round and then they kind of interlock on these edges. Uh, so by putting four together, we get a nice little column like that. Uh, this hasn't been weathered yet. Uh, there's a couple of these haven't been weathered. Um, these probably <laughs> quite clearly have been. Uh, so next job is just to get these, a little bit of weathering powder on these just to dirty them up. Um, then we could go put these in uh, on the layout. That null label is just to finish off that sculptor mold, really just bedding this into the landscape. So I will go off and do that, and then you will see that in place in a second. There we have the retaining walls in situ. And you should also be able to see that I've used sculptor mold just really to bed those in, uh, just so they're nice and blended into the landscape. I'm not going to put the capping stones on until after the sculptor mold has been painted. Um, but uh, whilst we, it is drying slowly, I reckon uh, we've got at least another three or four days before um, we're going to be in a position to paint that. Um, but when that's done, um, I will come back and just show you getting that painted up. And to paint our landscape, I'm uh, just going to use some very cheap kids poster paints. So we've got brown, white, black, and some cream. Just going to mix those up till we get the right colors. Uh, at the end of the day, um, we're probably not going to see any of this painting uh, because it's going to be cut. The, the, the kind of the hard standing surface is going to be uh, covered in something else. And all the grassy areas are going to be covered in scatters and grass. So this is very much just about having a kind of a... Um, a layer of color over that uh, white sculptor mold just in case something chips off. Um, and just to give us a sense of where the different types of landform are going to be. Um, so let's get uh, the painting done. I will probably do this as a very, as a time lapse. Um, so you don't have to sit through me painting that whole thing.
the car park surface, I'm going to try a little bit of a new technique. Um, brought a little bit from uh, something I saw on Double O'Neill. Um, so there will be a link to Trissy's video up, up there showing um, what he did. Um, I'm going to use some fine sand and some um, tiling grout uh, to create a mixture. Um, and then I'm going to apply this in pretty much exactly the same way as I did with Speed and Station. Um, if you didn't see that, uh, then I'll leave a link up, up there as well. Um, so this is uh, called Play Sand um, from b and I think it was. Um, just to be the kind of the grown up for one moment, uh, you're not supposed to take uh, sand and pebbles and stuff off any beaches in the UK and actually in most places in the world. Um, it is actually illegal. So please be very mindful of where you source things from. Um, but I will leave that with you. This uh, sand has been dried out a little bit, although not much as you can tell, and that's far too much. Right. Um, and then we're going to chuck some tiling grout in there. Um, and I'm just going to get a spoon and mix all that up um, and then figure out if I need a bigger container because there was far too much in there. Maybe I should use the spoon. Um, right, I'll come back when I've given that bit of a mix. So I found a more sensible container to mix this up in. Um, turns out that actually there probably isn't enough sand in there, given the amount of grout I put in. So I'm going to put a little bit more in there. Uh, just to give it a little bit more body. So I'll finish mixing that up. Um, Colour-wise, I'm not that bothered at the moment um, because whatever this is, I'm going to go over it with the airbrush um, to make that look more like the kind of surface it needs to look like at the end. So um, if it's a little bit yellow, it doesn't matter. Um, it's actually going to, I think once that's um, down and dry, that's actually going to be a good base colour to then work off with a few kind of different tones and accents and stuff. So, as I did with Spleen, I'm going to put a thick layer of PVA down, uh, get that over the top of it, um, smooth the surface off as much as I can um, like that, and then go over the top with um, a watered down PVA mix just to seal everything in place. Once that's all dry, we can then come back and sand that and get that um, as smooth as we need it to be. That's looking good now. Um, with the idea being that actually this is probably quite um, an unloved um, bit of kind of tarmac or, or kind of concrete um, and therefore we don't want this to be kind of too uniform. On the other parts of the layout, um, on the landscape I've um, gone straight from the uh, painted uh, sculptor mold to grassing on top of that um, to get a, and then got a nice thick layer of grass down on it. This time I'm going to try something a little bit different. Hopefully it will give a little bit of variation uh, just for this little part. Um, and for this I'm going to mix up um, a tub full of uh, fine turf. So I'm going to, I've got a couple here, burnt grass and earth. I'm going to very loosely mix those. Uh, then I'm going to put neat PVA down over the area and just kind of put this down um, as a covering. We'll start that as a base layer. Around some of the edges, we'll then uh, maybe use some soil and some other lighter colors, um, but as a kind of a main scatter. Uh, I'm not going to mix it too much because I actually want a little bit of variation in this. Um, so that'll do. So um, I'm not sure how easy it is to see that the, the color of that. Uh, there, there was a little bit of um, coarse turf in there from before, uh, but that's all, all fine and good. That is a very loose top coat done. Um, as you can see, I've not gone right up to the edges on everything yet. I've just done a really broad brush to start with. Um, so now a bit of water over the top of that um, and then some water down PVA. Uh, and then we just need to leave that to dry. And I suspect that'll take a while to dry. It's now been nearly two weeks. And as you can probably tell, uh, the glue still hasn't fully dried out. There's still quite a lot of moisture in that. Uh, so what I'm going to do for the moment is leave the car park area because uh, that's going to really need to dry before I can start sanding that down uh, and doing anything with that. But what I can do is add some grass onto the embankment areas um, and then leave that to dry. So I think that's the last thing I'm going to do in this video. Uh, you might be able to see that uh, I've added some of the capping stones in on that uh, retaining wall now. 
still a bit of work to do in that area, um, but it's here. It's not looking too bad now. I thought I'd try a different technique with my grassing as well in this area, just to see if we get a different look. So I've now been over this with two mil grass. Uh, this is a blend of a couple of, I think it's medium green and light green from Woodland Scenics. That's going to act as my base layer. Uh, and I'm going to get out the layering spray and go over with some four mil and then some six mil. Um, as with other areas, it, I just mix up um, kind of random uh, batches from a few different shades. Um, and then that gives a little bit of a kind of a more uh, varied appearance across the layout. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do now. Grab the layering spray, spray, spray that on, um, and then go over the top uh, with a static grass applicator. So we'll be back in a sec. I've now been over with the four mil. And as you can hopefully see, that's looking a little bit greener. So we've got some nice lush areas in there with the four mil. What I'm now going to do is, uh, given that a lot of this is south facing, is I'm going to get some six mil in kind of lighter straw-like colors and just go into some patches on the really kind of exposed bits uh, just to kind of make this look a little bit more late summer-like. So I'll be back in a second after I've done that. This is now with our six mil grass done and you can see, well, hopefully you can see on camera how uh, that more straw colored grass has just lifted the tone slightly um, in some of the more exposed areas. Uh, not finished by any means. Uh, we need to go over this with some trees and shrubs and things like that. Uh, but before we do that, we really need to figure out uh, what's going on with this car park area and get that tidied up. Uh, I can only do that once it's dried and the way things are going, that's going to be a while. So I think I'll get the video out before that uh, happens. But hopefully you'll agree it's looking uh, much better than it was at the start. Uh, and I will uh, finish with a couple of running shots just so you can see. Right, that's where I'm going to leave things for today. The main reason for that is that, uh, as you'll have seen, there's still some work to do laying track around that area, and also to figure out what's happening with the station. So uh, rather than put lots of effort in and get to a really kind of high level now and then potentially damage that uh, in some of the steps that are going on around it, I thought this was a good place to stop. Um, we can kind of then get the tracks laid and everything like that, and then we can then come back and revisit this with some of the detailing. Uh, now that detailing is going to include uh, hedgerows, uh, looking at the car park surface uh, and other bits and pieces like that. Now, there is one thing I could do with your help with. Um, as you'd have seen, there's quite a large area uh, where the, what I'm envisaging is being at least partially a car park is going to be. Um, I'd be really keen to hear your thoughts on what else could go in there. So in that kind of tarmac slash concreted area, what are interesting things that we might be able to have in, in, a, in a bit of waste ground that's quite close to the station in the middle of the 1970s? Um, so have a think about that. Uh, if there's anything that comes to mind, please do pop it in the comments uh, and I'll go through all of those um, and then hopefully we'll be able to uh, pick some of those ideas out uh, and kind of work on it in the future. But we'll leave things there for today. I hope you found it valuable me talking through the process I use for landscaping in a little bit more detail. Now in a second there's going to be some videos uh, from the channel appearing up there and there's going to be a subscribe button over there. If you're not already a subscriber please do think about doing that it really helps the channel and also you'll then get notified when new videos are uh, released but that about wraps it up for today i uh, look forward to seeing you all soon bye bye